most specifically, how about we talk about Newcastle football? That's, we can uh, do that. First we, off. We, we can do that. Okay, first off, we have Quaker Valley at Newcastle. Both teams looking for their first win. Both are 0-1 and one coming in. Newcastle, uh, tough loss last week to Shaler, 37-20. And we can talk about who they played and who the opposition was and, and what they brought into the game in terms of, uh, I believe, Shaler was winless last week and, or uh, last year. Quaker Valley, I believe, was the same way. We could talk all about that. I think what really needs to be talked about is, you know, Newcastle's uh, defense, as we talked about last year, you know, they surrendered 45 points a game and gave up 37 last week. This team is talented, Larry, Newcastle. Got a lot of talent, uh, a lot of athleticism, but it's only going to go as far as, uh, you know, how the defense goes. Uh, and the defense is going to have to allow probably about half of what it allowed last week. Well, I mean, I didn't see the game, and so I, I don't know if it was an issue of missed assignments or missed tackles. But, you know, Newcastle football traditionally was always based on its defense. Mm -hmm. uh, they had guys uh, that hit you so hard back in the day that, you know, when you woke up, you needed a new haircut. You understand? And, 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 it, and, and that was a tradition. That was a culture. And that's what you need to establish now. You know, you need to get back to that. You got to find 11 junkyard dogs on defense that just want to knock people's heads off, but have enough discipline to not, you know, to, to not lose their assignment as to what it should be and where they should be. So, you know, it's good coaching staff. They'll work on it. I mean, this is a game they got to win. They better win this one because Quaker Valley is really struggling. Yeah. And uh, I think they will. I think they'll take care of business. And, again, hopefully, uh, you know, fine-tune that defensive performance because I think you're right. They have a lot of athletes. Uh, a bunch of these kids I coached are on that team. They're tough kids. They're smart kids. Uh, and they're talented. So I look for the Hurricane to take care of Quaker Valley on Friday. Yeah, Quaker Valley only scored 20 points last year, was shut out in every game but, but one. That's the game they scored 20 points in. Larry, is it as simple as, you know, the game has evolved where it's wide open, teams are with spread offenses, with the exception of Wilmington. Uh, they're throwing the ball all over the lot, you know, wide open pro-style sets. Does Newcastle need to get more basic and just try to get like a, a grind it out, hold on to the ball, ball control to help out the defense and, and keep, play keep away? In that regard. I mean, that would, cer that would certainly make sense. I, I don't watch enough of Newcastle football to really weigh in on that. But I can tell you it's still my belief that to win high school football games, you need to run the ball. And teams that do, like Wilmington. And uh, in years past, West Allegheny, uh, they ran the ball down your throat. And, and you, you, I still believe you need to run the football in high school to win games because it does two things. It physically wears out the other team and it controls the clock. Uh, you know, there's nothing better than a 15 play drive that eats up eight, nine minutes of the first quarter in right. your head seven nothing. But I, I think when you can run the ball too, you you physically, you physically beat up the other team and, and they become fatigued. Just Larry Kelly's two cents. I'm not a football coach, but I've been around it. You know, I, I've watched it. It's hard to believe, but even in the day, I played a little bit of it. So uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, something has to change here. You can't give up 40 points a game and win football games in high school. Not in this conference. Not, not, in, the, not in the parkway. It's, it's too much of a meat grinder every week. Uh, oh, and it's probably the toughest conference in, in Western Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that it's going to turn around and it's going to start this week. Good. All right. Uh, these games are Friday, uh, September 3rd, and Newcastle's one of them. That's a 7 p.m. kickoff. All these are Friday, 7 p.m. Uh, Elwood City's playing its first game of the year. They are at Union, which is 1-0. Good chance for Stacey Robinson's team to – to go to go two and zero on the year, get some early momentum. Joe Lemenza's team has lost seventeen games in a row. Joe's uh, looking for his first win as an Elwood coach in three seasons, so it's kind of a uh, slim pickings right now, you know, in terms of Elwood City. But uh, hey, it's a new season, you know. 
we really don't know what, what Elwood has at the moment. No. And again, it's, it starts at the lowest levels. Uh, you have to build the program. You have to develop your culture, the mindset that you want your players to have. Joe Lomenza is a good coach. He's been around a long time. I know his dad uh, uh, actually competed against his dad. He'll turn it around, much the same way Steve Antuano turned it around in basketball. It, but it takes a while. It's not going to happen overnight. As for Union, you know, listen, Stacy has been there a long time. His kids know what Stacy expects. They have a culture that's developed. And, and when Union has – when they have players, they win. And when I say players, I'm talking about quantity of players, not necessarily always quality because, you know, their numbers, it's, it's hard to win football games throughout a long football season when you only have 18 guys in uniform. So yeah. uh, I'm looking for the Scotties to win. Uh, I am. Uh, it's a home game for them. They're one and oh, they had a really good game against Mohawk and I expect them to, uh, to uh, be two and oh after Friday night. Good hard-hitting battle in Hookstown as Nishanik and Southside Beaver collide. Uh, it, both teams 1-0. and uh, Larry, it's, it's tough to win down there. Uh, Southside Beaver comes to play. They, they bring their lunch pail. They're a hard-hitting uh, physical football team, according to Fred Mazzocco. And, uh, you know, Lance, Lancers have a good football team this year. They got a lot of weapons at different places. Cameron Owens, Kurt Summerfield, uh, uh, Johnny Huff. Uh, they don't have just one guy that teams have to stop. It, it, you, could, you could put two or three guys around uh, Cameron Owens and say, stop me. But, you know, Kurt Summerfeld could run the ball from his quarterback spot. He could throw the ball to Johnny Huff. There's people that can beat you on, on the Shannon, and that's going to make them a really tough football team this year. Uh, and Coach Mangino, who's a, an attorney in my office, uh, he likes what he sees at practice. Mm -hmm. Uh, he thinks they're going to be really good. Uh, yeah. He thinks they're going to they're going to beat Southside Beaver, and I tend to agree with him. But Southside Beaver's tough. You better come to play. Those young men down there are tough kids, and you know it's an away game. Uh, much like every away game that you play, you know you want to limit the turnovers because that creates momentum, you know, for the other team. So if Nishanik protects the ball, they're going to be two and zero after Friday night. You're, you're right. They're a very good team. They, 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 they had a very, they had an outstanding performance against Shenango last week. Absolutely. Last game on Friday, Mohawk zero and one at Cornell first game of the season, uh, non-conference again, uh, Mohawk kind of struggled against union struggled at home in that 41 to 20 uh, loss to the Scotties. Uh, you know, Larry, I don't know if you can kind of connect the, the, the two, but a lot of times, uh, you know, people will say you favor the team that has got a game under their belt over a team that is playing its first game of the year. Maybe it's got something to do with getting the kinks worked out or, or what have you. But uh, this is Mohawk's second game, and Cornell's taken the field for the first time. Evidently, Cornell must have had a scrimmage uh, last week. You see it that way? Do you, do you feel that Mohawk might have an advantage, even though they are the road team? Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, they have one game under their belt, uh, you know. It's one thing to scrimmage. It's another thing to be in live game action. Uh, I'm sure the coaches had an opportunity to look at film and work this week on, on some of the things that they could have done better against Union. Uh, don't know about Cornell, you know, uh, what their numbers are. Oftentimes they don't have, you know, big numbers. Uh, Mohawk's well coached. They'll be a better team this week than they were last week. I, I'm confident of that. And because Cornell's playing their first game, I like Mohawk to win this one. All right. That takes care of the Friday games. They are all 7 p.m. Uh, Non-conference. And the last game of the, the weekend is Saturday, September 4th. It also is 7 p.m. And it is also non-conference. And it is Laurel at Shenango. The Spartans are coached by Brian Cooper. And once upon a time, Brian Cooper roamed the sidelines at Shenango for eight seasons. Good county clash uh, this week. It's been a while since, it, since these teams have played, since 2013, I believe, if my research was right. And Laurel won that game 28-7. to seven. Uh, just Real quick about Elwood Union. This is the first time since at least 1994 since those schools have played. So it's nice to see these uh, county rivalries uh, heat up and, and uh, get reunited here, especially like Laurel and Shenango. 
I love Tri-County games. That was a great league for years and years. When I wrote for the Newcastle News, there, uh, there were battles on Friday night between these Tri-County teams. And uh, coaching baseball at Shenango, I learned that there's a little edge between the students at Laurel and the students at Shenango. So I think both teams are going to be ready here. Uh, and they're playing on Saturday night at Shenango, which was a tradition for the longest time. Listen, Shenango had a pretty good first half against uh, Nishanik last week. I think they got a little fatigued. You know, they don't have a lot of numbers either. Uh, and uh, Coach Graham's a good coach. They're going to be a, a better football team on Saturday than they were the first week. Probably a little better condition. But Laurel's tough. You know, the Wildcats better buckle little chin straps. Uh, because Laurel, Laurel's tough this year, and they have a very good team. Uh, but it'll be a great game on Saturday night at Shenango. You might see me roaming the sidelines in that game. Okay. Uh, I don't know what Northeast is going to evidently have this year, but that's who Laurel beat in the opener, 56-6. Uh, Laurel was unstoppable in that game. Nine possessions. Each of their first eight possessions resulted in touchdowns. Three of those eight possessions were one-play drives. Uh, and they were home run hitter type uh, uh, scores. I, Luke McCoy had a, like one or two of those, I believe, uh, 40, 50 yard runs, whatever it was. Uh, like I say, I don't know what Northeast has, but Laurel looked awfully, awfully impressive uh, against Northeast. Maybe that's a, not a great Northeast team. I don't know. But we're going to find out about Laurel on Saturday night. That's for sure. We will. And we're going to find out a little more about Shenango. Uh, on Saturday night. You know, it's unfortunate for Shenango that uh, Tino Campoli, who in my view was going to be the best quarterback in the conference, is unable to play because, you know, he had elbow surgery. Uh, he's a tremendous quarterback. We're hoping to have him back for baseball. Looks like he will be back. And, uh, uh, you know, he's a big time athlete that, you know, would have helped the Shenango football team tremendously because he's a senior, his experience, his talent. So, uh, you know, it's going to take a few weeks, I think, for Shenango to find themselves because they're playing a young, a young kid at quarterback, and it takes a little while, you know, for, for young players to get comfortable. But uh, I expect this to be a close game on Saturday night. As I said, there's always a little edge between Laurel and Shenango. I never realized that <laughs> until this past baseball season. You like how I pulled one of your tricks? You lot, you think so? You think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I know so now. Right. I do. I, I know so. So the cats will be ready. They'll be ready to play. All right. Well, you kind of put it out there that you like the Canes, you like Union, you like Nishanik. I believe you probably sounded like you were going toward Mohawk. Right. You, I've noticed, though, that you did not pick this game, Larry. Well, because I was waiting for you to ask me. I'm asking. Look, I'm, I want you to look at me. I'm, I'm picking an Angle Wildcats. You hear me? I'm I picking agree. the Cats. Okay. I know some of the kids on that team. Those dudes are tough. The court, they're going to be a little more experienced at quarterback. I think they'll be, they'll be ready to go. So I'm picking the Cats. Write it down. You can write it down. Okay. Well, Put it in the book. It's right here. Put it in the book. Put it in the book, he says. All right. And I'm, wearing, and I'm wearing the colors. Can you see my shirt? I can see it. Shenango, WPIL champs. Okay. So I'm, I'm uh, I guess I'm a Wildcat. You are. You better pick the Wildcats, Larry. <laughs> You're going to take a lot of grief if you don't. And I'm, I'm picking them. I'm picking the Wildcats. All right. Put it in the book. Put it in the book, he says. Okay. Everybody, that was Gridiron 2021, our first episode. It's great to see Larry Kelly again. It's been a while, probably three months or so. Last time I saw him was down at State College for a baseball championship game. And it's great to talk uh, high school football again and bring, bring everybody around the county some great content. We look forward to doing that on a week-to-week -week basis. Stay tuned, everybody, for, for more segments uh, as the weeks progress. For Larry Kelly, I'm Ron Pawniewaz. We will see you back here next week on Gridiron. As a veteran, I fought for our ideals that we are a nation of laws, that the laws apply to everyone, and that no one is above the law. So if you've been hurt in an auto accident, I don't think you should be pushed around by some insurance company. Not on my watch. I'll work hard to protect your rights, 
I'm not afraid to go to trial, and I've never run from a fight. I'm Chuck Garbett, and I'm proud to serve the people of Lawrence County.